One thing that's really fun to do with Adobe Photoshop is create little animations intended for the web. In this demonstration I'm going to go over creating an animated GIF. We'll look at a file that's already set up and we'll take a look at what goes into creating an animated GIF. I'm going to talk to you about the animation panel. There's a timeline version versus the frame by frame. Then we're going to talk about the layers panel relationship to the animation panel. And then we'll go over to the steps to creating an animated GIF. I'll make a sample animated GIF. We'll test the animation. We'll export it and then we'll view it in a browser. So let's begin by looking at a PSD that's already set up. As you can see in the layers panel, I've got a lot of layers in this animation. I've got some background elements, which is a logo, and I've got a layer after layer after layer of a bunch of dots. And these dots indicate the movement of a path that this dot would follow as it went around that blue ellipse shape. So you can see as I show each one of these layers how that dot would move around the path. And then of course the top layer is just a repeat of those letter forms that will go in front of that blue dot as it passes along the, um, the, the blue ellipse path. So that's how each, that's how this layer bunch looks. And it looks like this because I'm creating a frame by frame animation and I'm not using any tweening possibilities that Photoshop does. And the reason is that Photoshop would have a hard time interpolating this ellipse path unless I was able to show it very specifically um, the path that I wanted the ellipse to follow. So sometimes it's easier when you have something that's not moving in a straight line to do this in a frame by frame animation. The other thing that you would want to show is if you went under window and bring up the animation panel, you can see that there are a number of frames going across and each frame is going to be related to something that's going on in the layers panel. So for example, if I move forward to frame 2, I would have this frame or this layer turned off and then turn on the next layer. And then as I move forward, I would turn on the next. And as I keep moving forward, in this animation, I just turn on each of the layers individually and so on and so forth related to the path that this blue dot would follow. Now let me just close this out and show you what the default is for the animation. So the first time you begin your own animations you might not have this particular um, this particular panel. It might come up as the timeline panel. So when you first bring up the animation panel, it might look more like this, which is the timeline version of the panel. And if we spread this out, you can see that um, it's set up to show as things move through t forward in time the changes that might occur across a, a number of frames. So it, 30 frames per second is the speed and as you get to frame number 15 then that would be a half second has he lapsed. So the timeline is a little bit different panel than the one that's used for frame by frame and to bring up the frame by frame animation panel you click here convert to frame animation at the bottom uh, right of the panel. Okay, so I'm actually going to close this PSD and bring up one that we did not complete. 
so that you can see how this would be built. And as the end result, I'll show you how that looks in a browser after we test it and build the animation. So let's just take a look here. I'm going to close this out and I'm going to open one that is not complete, the practice. Okay, so in this practice file, I have my assets created. I have the letter forms that are above. I do have the little blue dot already created and the base, base layer logo and the background, which is white. And I'm going to animate a frame by frame animation um, using, you know, vector shapes and not ne and text, but not necessarily photographs. Because we're doing an animated GIF, um, photographs tend to pixelate and they don't optimize for the web very well in the GIF format. So it's a good idea to use like vector graphics and text um, shapes, shapes that are filled. Those work best for animated GIFs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dot layer active. And I need to make a series of layers that resemble the path that the blue dot is going to follow. So big picture, first I make my layers and then I'm going to create my animation frames. So to create an exact duplicate of the dot layer, I use my layers drop down panel and I just create a duplicate layer and it makes dot copy. With dot copy enabled and visible, I use my move tool to move that dot forward along the path and then I can make the dot layer invisible by clicking on the little eyeball icon to the left and I can create another duplicate layer. Using the drop down menu I duplicate the layer dot copy two that lets me know this is another copy and then you even though you can't see it that dot has been copied using the move tool once again I just move it into place and I make the layer below invisible and then I'm going to once again duplicate the layer. And I continue in this manner moving each dot further and further along the path until I have enough layers built to represent the path that this dot would follow. So it's somewhere in the range of you know 25 to 30 layers when you get done. And since this is much like a cooking show I'm going to um, go ahead and open the other PSD so you can see what it looks like without having you to painfully sit through me creating all 30 of the layers. So I will press pause right now and open the other document. Okay, I have loaded the other document, which I will make active here. And you can see that I've made 28 layers of the dots moving consecutively around as they mimic the path that the dot would follow as it goes around the path. And the reason that frame by frame animation works is because our eye closes the gap. Our eye creates the in-betweens. So we don't have to um, make, you know, make the dots extremely close one after the, uh, the other. We can actually have a little space in between each one as we create those layers because when we add the animation frames, our eyes will fill in the blanks. And that's why animation works, is because our brains tend to fill in the blanks of movement. So if we look back at the other one where I have made zero frames, now the idea of creating each individual frame would go like this. You would begin with only dot visible and all of the other dots invisible. I would set the animation frames delay to zero seconds. To do this, I use the drop down menu for selecting frame delay time and I choose no delay. 
you could see how you could considerably slow down an animation by choosing frame delay. But if we did that, then it would look like the dot sort of stutter steps around the path of the ellipse. So I'm going to choose no delay. And it's important for me to do this before I start creating animation frames because it's going to copy the same delay time as I create each frame. So once I've set the animation frames, I'm going to close out this log to zero seconds. Now I can begin making more frames. I just simply bring up the animation frame panel drop down menu on the top right of the panel and I choose new frame. When I create a new frame you can see how visually the relationship is now between the frame and the dots. I'm going to hide one dot and show the next dot. Let's see that one more time. I'm going to create a new frame and see how it maintains the zero second frame delay. I'm going to hide a dot and then show the very next one in order. This is why it was very important that we create all of the layers first because now as we create each of the frames it sets them up for us sequentially and we already have the layers in place. So let's look at our completed PSD. I've done this for all 28. You can see as we scroll forward there's including the first one there's a total of 29 frames now. There's also a controller bar at the bottom of the animation panel which allows me to hit play and kind of see how the dots are going to move around in this little ad banner. So if I click play I can see how that's generally how that's going to look with the dot moving around and notice how the play with zero seconds delay is playing each one of the animation frames one after another. So this is how we test the animation before we export it. I can also return to the very beginning by clicking on this button. It went back to frame one. Once I have tested using this controller bar at the bottom of the animation frames panel, once I have tested this and find that it's okay, then I'm ready to export. But what happens if I get to, if I notice that there's a stutter step or if there's something wrong? Let me set one up specifically. Let's set up frame four. And let's say, for example, we didn't turn on the correct, the correct dot. So frame four, I think, was related to dot three. Let's say we accidentally hit dot seven. And now, if I go to the beginning and I play the animation, you can see that there's an unusual jump in there. And if you see a jump like this, you just know, oh, there's a layer out of place. Not a problem. You hit stop on the testing. It's kind of near the beginning of the animation. So I'm going to return to the front by clicking the two back arrows. And since I absolutely know that it was layer four, I can actually visually go through and check my layers and figure out which one it is but we actually know that it was this frame four and so I know that I need to figure out which dot layer to turn on so I'll go forward and back so from three to five it goes from two so the one that was missing was three go back to the beginning press play and then I see a smooth movement going around the ellipse once that you are happy with the way that your animation frames are performing. It's now time to export the GIF. I'll go under File, Save for Web. Once I get the dialog box, I'm going to choose the following settings. Let's see if I can make this dialog box any smaller so that you can see. I'm going to choose GIF the optimized file format. Um, selective should be 
should be the, a good algorithm for choosing these colors because we don't have that many colors in there. Um, I'll choose 64 colors should be plenty, although we could probably get away with 8 colors. Uh, it looks like we need a few more colors because the anti-aliasing of some of the line work isn't working out that well. So I can try 16, 32, until I feel comfortable that anti-aliasing is looking good. And we're going to not dither this GIF. We want it to be smooth lines and text. This one is not a transparent GIF, so transparency is unchecked. Convert to sRGB tends to keep the color, um, the color values a little more saturated once they are made into the web, so I like to consistently convert to sRGB. It maintains saturation a little better than not. Internet standard RGB is fine. We're not adding any metadata to this. It's just a small animated GIF. I'm not going to add title, author, any sort of metadata to this particular image. Notice that the image size is what we set it to, 405, 125, and I can change my looping options, which you may not be able to see on the video, but I can change the looping options to forever or once or other. Make it play three times, make it play two times. I'm going to set that to forever because this is going to be a loop of the 29 frames over and over again. And then I would hit save. Let's back up one second and take a look at the looping options in the animation frames. In the animation frames panel we have the choice here in this drop down menu to choose how many times this animation will loop. Right now I have it checked to forever. It's just going to spin around the ellipse over and over again. Another thing that would be interesting to do is make a setting on the very last frame. I don't think we need this if we have looping set to forever, but it's good just to double check. Using the drop down menu with the last frame selected, we can go to first frame. So we can actually add an action to the very last frame of the animation to go to and play the first frame. And that creates a loop as well. So once I have gone to File, Save for Web, and exported my GIF, I can now open it in a browser. So I'll bring up my browser and let's just open up a new window here and let's open under file open file and I can actually browse to where I have just made it an animated GIF so I think I put it in module 7 demonstrations and here's the animated GIF I can open it in a browser and we can see its performance in a browser window so you can see actually how it will be displayed on the web. And that completes the demonstration on creating a quick and dirty frame-by-frame -frame animation using Adobe Photoshop.